Welcome to this tutorial. We are going to transfer files into Lightroom and there's a couple ways to do that. You can do it directly from the card, but we also did some transferring in Finder. So first off, I'm going to load a card. I'm just pushing a new SD card into our computer. You go to the click and then you'll see it on your desktop. It appears here. Sometimes it'll be here. Sometimes it'll be down there. I think it's maybe where you last left it if it was connected, but you can move files around on your desktop if you want. Re reorganize. And then if I double click this, we'll see that this is an SD card. It has the DCIM folder and then a bunch of images in the DCIM folder that were last shot in class. So we're going to transfer some of them directly using Lightroom, but also in the sock drawer, as we discussed earlier in class, you'll have your folder and then you have a project for every piece of media that you create in here. You want to create a new project folder. So we have the date and we have fill the frame for this one. And then I have a bunch of files and I could drag and drop this file in like this, or I could grab the CR3 file actually is what I want. Command C to copy it, go back over here, Command V to paste it. And then you can use that quick preview if I like single click and spacebar to preview it to see files bigger. But working in Finder, it's more for moving files around. Lightroom Classic is where we want to be to like really see files and start to manipulate the files and make them look better. So we're going to do a different method of transferring files and also show you how to bring files that you already transferred from the Finder into Lightroom. So I'll close out my Finders and I'm going to open up Lightroom. If it's not already in your dock, you can go up here and search for it, or I can go into my launch pad and that would jump off as well. And we want Lightroom Classic. So here's our Lightroom Classic and I'll put that in my dock because it's something that we use regularly. So drag and drop and I'll click to open it. And in the last video, if you didn't already do that, we want to double check and just make sure you have the correct Lightroom catalog open. So you want to make sure that that is on your sock drawer as well. So I can double check that here in my finder. Here's my sock drawer. Here's my folder. And then there's my catalog. So you have a bunch of files in there, but you just got to make sure it's already on your sock drawer. And now I can start to import files. So the import button is down here. I'm going to click import and I have some options. So because I'm selected here, this I'm on the untitled device, which is that SD card from camera. And then I could navigate to other areas. If I wanted to go onto my drives, I can go into like the Mac hard drive or here's the sock drawer and there's the folder where I already have some stuff that we saw in Finder already. It's gonna match up here's sock drawer. Here's that, here's my fill the frame. So these images should look about the same. You're gonna to start to see kind of like the same images in the finder view, but this is what they look like in Lightroom. And it's kind of quicker at a glance. You can see all your images a little bit bigger. It's, it's good because it's, you know, built for photography to see images. So here we are, but I'm going to go back to my card. So I'll go to that DCIM folder and then I'll actually go to my subfolders there. Or if I just go to the root folder and this, if, if this is checked off, include subfolders, it'll show all the images in the subfolders underneath DCIM. So by default, they're all checked off. Try not to you know, import all of them. You don't need to, you wanna just import yours. So we're gonna uncheck all photos, all photos, uncheck all photos, right? And then I might go down and find just the ones that look like the same photographer who took these. So let's, let's go with just from here all the way down to here, but check that out. I di didn't hold any modifier keys and those two things were the only thing selected. So if I hold the shift key, that didn't work either. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna uncheck uncheck. I'm going to click this one and then shift click to this one. That worked. So I didn't click the check mark. I clicked like more like on the gray area. And now if I hit check, now all of these will be checked off. So I'm going to grab all of those from my DCIM. This is the source side, the left hand side. And then in this pane here, you see your images up at the top here. It's going to copy the file from the SD card untitled to not our Mac hard drive. We don't want to put it in pictures we're gonna change our destination here. So we could go other destination up here, and then I'm gonna to go to my sock drawer in this folder in my fill the frame and then choose that. And note, it already set it up down here in this destination pane. So if I like up and down arrow destination, like you can kind of like hide things over here if you wanted to get into some of the other details of what you can do in your import window. That's this window that's kind of in the foreground that we've been working on. You can use the the triangles, sometimes I call them down arrows. Sometimes I think they call you know twirl arrows. So yeah, kind of like twirls down. So we're looking here, this is in our correct location. So we're putting it in our sock drawer. I can up arrow our Mac hard drive. So it's going in sock drawer. 
it's telling you how much storage space you have. So there's 995 gigabytes left on this storage device. So I'm going in, within my folder for class into a very specific folder for this project. And it looks like it's going to make some subfolders based on the date that the camera was set. So this was set to like a 24, 2024 date. And there might be, you know, it's all dependent on the camera body, what the, the time and date stamp is set to. But uh, let's go ahead and import these. Let me just check one more thing. So file handling, we don't have any, we don't have to do anything there. File renaming, we're going to keep the names. Apply during import. I could do a develop setting that I use regularly, but I'm not going to. I think I'm good with that. And that's basically it. So we're putting it onto this fill the frame folder. So I can say import. And then up at the top here, it's copying from the car. It says operation in progress and going to our sock drawer. And I'm just going to show you that here. Here's my fill the frame. I'll go to this list view. So see how it's got subfolders now based on what the card was set to. And then it's got the date that, that those shots were set to. And there's all those CR3 files that I imported in the background there. Here's one. There's the top one. And as I go down... These are all the files that I've just made a copy of to my sock drawer. And you can see my file path down there. That's actually kind of cool. Like in this view, I've changed in Finder. If you go to Finder and then view showing the path bar, that's that bottom thing. So it's not there anymore. View show path bar. So you can kind of see where your files are stored. You always want to make sure it always tracks back to that sock drawer and it's in your folder when you're doing this stuff so that you never lose any files. So we're good to go there. And then from here, we would get into developing. So I can close out this. Actually, no, this is this is the library. My import window is now no longer front and center. So if I click on this, it opens up the import window. It kind of like jumps on in, in front of that screen. So I'm just going to say done. I don't need to do anything. And now I have a bunch of files in here in my library. So library is kind of like Finder where you can look through all your different files in your catalog. So we got a catalog set up from our very first video. And then you have like an all photographs. And then you could, it, it can sort by date. It kind of like smart sorts it by the timestamp that's on the file. You can also use collections. So I might make a collection and this is only for like Lightroom labeling purposes, but I might make all these files that just came in, say fill the frame. So I could like go and it'll only do one because it's currently selected gray. If I go like hold shift and now all these are selected. Note they're all down here and it's called the camera roll down at the bottom. I can make a collection with all of them. So create a collection. It's going to say, what do you want to name it? I'm going to say fill the frame and create. And now I have a fill the frame collection. If I wanted to jump back to that, I can just click on the sidebar here and they're labeled rather than them just being like, all photographs or like a date that you could click to. Now it's got like a label, fill the frame. So I would be able to see all my stuff over here. So I'm actually gonna look at some of these. So if you click on these one at a time in develop tab, now that they're down here, so you can kind of see them full screen more and you can quickly look and see how good we are with focus. Like this is pretty good focus here. It starts to get a little shallow depth of feel, but it is fill the frame. Good focus fills the frame. Good focus fills the frame. This one's good, good. This one's good. It's a little blurrier. This one starts to get a little blurrier. Here you're starting to see some noise too. See how it's got some noise. That was probably a very high ISO. And you can check your ISO here. See how you're at 25,600. You're seeing that graininess there. Are they all like that? Yeah. So it that's because this camera might have been set to a manual mode. So we're at one over 350 of the second, which is pretty fast. This pops up and it gives you, you can kind of like learn how to use the develop mode. So down here is where you can edit photos. Here's the film strip, camera roll down at the bottom there. Next, cropping and local adjustment. So you would be able to like select specific things. And then rather than like whole image would be just these sliders, you can go in here and, and select specific things and do, do fine tune just specific things in frame. And then next, non-destructive you got a history that you can backtrack through snapshots for different looks so you can kind of like save the current adjustments over in this section here and then using the presets it's got some presets on the side there so we'll close that but back to what i was saying we have there's a fast shutter kind of a closed down iris a little a smaller hole and then over here it has to correspondingly have a higher iso to get the, the shot to to freeze and have the proper exposure setting so you're going to start to see in some of these, like you can kind of see it here, 
that's what noise looks like. It's kind of like a little green here. If I zoom in, see how you got those noisy pixels there? That's the, the thing that you want to try to shoot your lower ISOs to, to clean that up. But these all look good. Like they're mostly in focus, fully fill in the frame. This was shot with the macro lens. I think having the macro lens is the way to go for this project. This one's slightly out. This one's good. They're all filling the frame though. So the macro lens does a really nice job of filling up the frame. This one you could argue, but it does have all kinds of like technical things, not quite in focus. Some of that was like slightly out. So because this was a slower shutter, so here we have a 1 15th of a second. If you do any kind of movement, you'll have some motion blur. So I think that's what we're seeing there, a little bit of motion blur. But overall, this was very well shot. And we might want to select some that were kind of cool. So let's go with this one here. It looks pretty sharp. And then I might do some cut controls over here. So I could change my exposure. I can brighten it up or darken it. So I might maybe push it slightly. I might make it contrastier. So brighter brights, darker darks, or less contrastier, like mid-range gets boosted and the, the brights come down and the darks come down. So, you know, you kind of see the difference between those. So I might make it a little contrastier. I can push my highlights or pull my highlights. So I, I can look at the graph up here, over here, showing me to the right, it's the bright stuff, to the left, it's the dark stuff. I'm probably not gonna touch most of this. Clarity, I might make it a little bit more clearer or a little bit more hazier. So clearer, maybe like there, so to bring out a little bit of the texture. Not a whole lot of color, but you could make it more vibrant or more saturated or desaturated and make it full grayscale. I'll scroll down. Curves get a little tricky. I wouldn't mess with these too much until you really know what you're doing because you can do some pretty, pretty crazy edits and then it starts to look like distorted. So, you know, just be careful if you are making curve adjustment, jump out of curves. And then color mixer, looks like you can select individual colors and change things here. So that's a cool thing. Point color, I'm not gonna do anything with that. So I'll go back up to color mixer. Color grading, fixing up your colors with some color wheels. It's a little bit more advanced. We won't need to do that on this one. Detail, here we go, denoise. So we might wanna mess with denoise on this one. So here it's showing you some of that noisiness. If I turn that on, it's gonna really look at the file and might even use some AI to clean that up. Sometimes when you denoise, it gets like not as tack sharp, like you really want your sharpness, but it does look like it's gonna clean up some of that. Let's see what happens. It's taking some time to do it. And then you have some sliders down here that you can make some adjustments on once you get through this denoise. A little bit longer than 10 seconds can't really do anything until that goes away. So we'll wait patiently. And there's that. So maybe if I turn it off, turn it back on again, hard to detect. Maybe we should look at a different file. So you can see it here. If we're like zoomed in, I can crank it up even more and on. Harder to see with this image, but you can kind of see it with it closed up there. A lens correction. I think we're good on that one. It is detecting it. Transform. This would be if you are making adjustments like direction or rotation for cropping or aspect. So we can like negate all that. I'm gonna undo those. Command Z a bunch, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. Lens blur might be something to tinker with. So it's kind of simulating depth of field there. You just saw the foreground and now the background is blurry. Pretty cool. And this is racking focus. Wow, you can switch between the foreground and the background. The tech gets better and better every year. That's all new stuff. Effects, vignetting, we'll skip that for now. Calibration, nope. Well, I don't need that. So overall, I think that's, you know, maybe what I would do with this one if I was retouching it, and then I would go to export it or print it. So exporting is file, export, and I'm just selecting one. If I hold held shift and select a bunch that I retouch, I can do more than one at a time. But if I go to export, it's gonna bring me up to this dialog box. And then where do I wanna put it? I'm probably gonna go again to my sock drawer. So I would go to a specific folder and choose it. And here's my sock drawer for fill the frame. And then I might even make a new folder here and call this either developed or retouch. And now in my retouched folder, I would choose that. And then I could export this specific one. I, it, you could make that folder in this step here to put it in a subfolder and name the subfolder this way. So I'll just uncheck that since I already made a folder. File naming, same file name, we'll go down. We're gonna make it a JPEG. So this should be the CR3 file, which is the raw file. So you get all that pixel data. And then we're gonna make it a JPEG and it'll be, you know, you can crank up the quality if you want, but it's usually pretty good if you, even if you leave it at that. You don't have to mess with any of these. What I usually do mess with is my resizing. 
and I would set it to the size of a cell phone. So here I might Google up like what's current self best resolution for image exports. Let's see what AI says. So da, 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 is it gonna tell me three pixels per inch? So pixel dimensions, this is what I'm looking at. 1280 pixels on long edge is good for social media. So let's do that. So let's go back over here to Lightroom Classic. And then I'm gonna go image sizing, resize to fit, long edge, like it said, and then we're doing 1280. And resolution pixels per inch was fine. 240 pixels per inch is good. And then all this, I think we can leave. If you wanted to do a watermark, you could do like your own like text label on your images. If you wanted to have it like baked into the image, we don't need to do that now. So I'm just gonna do one, I'm gonna click export. And then I'll go back over to Finder and you should see it in my stock drawer, Brian Stone, and fill the frame. And then I should have my retouch and then there it is. So that's the one that I just retouched with a little bit of denoising and a little bit of contrast and a little bit of exposure. So, you know, there you kind of see the file path and then this is what you would put up to your Google Classroom when you're all done. So we're gonna do that. And then the last part of this video, I'll show you how to make your contact sheet. So we're gonna go over to our library and it'll be something like this where you see all your thumbnails, but we're gonna do it in the print tab. So you can use the print tab to print on printers. So let's go through this one, module let's print edited your photos, so personal printer or create JPEGs you can send to a print service. So we're gonna go next, the print module, style and layout. So this is where I think it gives you some presets or the contact sheet, that's the one we're gonna use. Select the photos to print, so the toolbar. So we, we're gonna go down to the film strip and select them there. Your print settings, we're gonna change from printer to JPEG, so it doesn't go to a printer, we're gonna save it as a JPEG file in a second and then it'll say save to JPEG, I think when we change it. So I'll go here. So we, we don't want just one. I'm actually gonna go to the bottom here and command A, select all of these. And then I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna leave it at contact sheet. Image settings, rotate to fit, that's fine. Layout, here's where I need to change some stuff. So my page grid, I want it to be like a four by five, something like that, or maybe a four by five this way. And then maybe rotate to fit. There we go, so now they're all kind of facing the right direction. And then you got some stuff that you can mess with here. Like, do you want to show the guys or not show the guys? Maybe we won't show the guys. I think that looks fine. And that's like a clean way to look at it. Yeah, I'm okay. Cell size, you know, you can kind of make things bigger or smaller. That looks good, nice and big like that. The guides will leave off. Here I could do identity plate. I'll get rid of that. And then watermarking. I guess we can add a watermark now. We don't need that either. That's like that overlay again. Like you could put your logo, your company logo on top of it. Page options, photo info, no. Down here, print to. We're going to set that to JPEG file. And now it says print to file instead of print. Resolution's fine. Boom, 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 boom. Done, done, done. And now I'm going to print to file. It's going to say, where do you want to put it? I can put it in that retouch folder and call this fill. Oh, let's do the date. Like we name things accurately because I did not do that on making this folder. But uh, 2025-10-01 contact sheet. And now that'll go in my retouch and save it. And then I can go back to Finder and see it. So it's, it's doing it right now. See that progress bar up there? It's printing, preparing to print job. There's my contact sheet, single click, space bar. And that would also go up to Google Classroom. So for this assignment, you're gonna put up your contact sheet, your add that file. You're gonna put up a couple retouch ones that you like, and then that'll wrap up this project.